we in the study come to the last uh, stu last study on Matthew chapter 23. Matthew 23 is the series of ferocious attacks by Jesus on the religious establishment of his day. We will be looking at Matthew chapter 23, verses 37 to 39. And the end of this chapter, we begin a transition to a new focus in the Gospel of Matthew. Reading from the Amplified New Testament, Matthew chapter 23 and verse 37 says this, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, murdering the prophets and stoning those who are sent to you. How often would I have gathered your children together as a mother fowl gathers her brood under her wings, and you refuse? Behold, your house is forsaken and desolate, abandoned and left destitute for, of God's help. For I declare to you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed, magnified, and worship, adored and exalted, he who comes in the name of the Lord. Parenting is not always easy or without risk. In fact, parents can do all the right things and still have their children go astray. You fight this in the church, right? There is kind of a sense in some quarters that parenting is kind of, well, almost automatic. You do the right things and voila, your children will turn out in a certain way. You can raise a child in a loving, caring and home. You can raise that child to love and serve God. You can provide all the needed love and support to have that child make the tra successful transition into the adult years. It could be sudden or it could be gradual. One day, though, it is final. The child announces to you and to the world that he, she is leaving what you have given to him or her and they're leaving it behind. You are devastated and heartbroken. Your pleas are ignored. In fact, that makes things worse. As you plead with them, they simply dig in their heels deeper. The decision is made, and you may never see in your lifetime that child return to what they once had. That is a reality, unfortunately, for some parents. They've done all the right things, and yet, their child has rejected that. Jesus, in that sense, is the ultimate grieving parent. Jesus looks to Jerusalem and is heartbroken. Jerusalem was where the temple was. The temple was the place where God, symbolically, was enthroned and lived. The temple was the place where God was to be worshipped Jerusalem had some of the choices of God's servants come to call its people back to him again, again, and again. Jesus wanted to embrace and, as it were, love Jerusalem. But what does Jerusalem do but respond to him by seeking and eventually doing his crucifixion? What could Jesus do? What more could God give? What Jerusalem could not see at that moment was that their rejection would lead to the devastation of the Jewish revolt in A.D. 66 to 73. And in A.D. 70 proper, the destruction of the temple. Basically, the, Roman, the Jewish revolt of the late 60s would lead to devastation throughout the Promised Land. The Romans were not tolerant at all of any people who rebelled against their authority. In the Roman Empire, the key was submission to their authority. And when the Jews revolted, and, you know, they didn't just revolt for a time and season. They dug in their heels. The Jewish revolt can be taken to AD 73. We think of the fall of Masada as kind of one of the closing acts of this the point is that this was inevitable once they rejected Jesus. Because it be the reality is they had no use for God. 
So they wanted to be seen as living for God on their own terms and not having God and set them up for the destruction which was to come within a generation of Jesus' death. Noah is not so much God's judgment as much as the fact that they rejected God's provision. The devastating reality is that people reject what is good and noble, and we can do nothing about that. The tragedy is that there are far too many children raised in unstable and dysfunctional homes. These children often make situations, bad situations worse by making poor moral and lifestyle choices. We often dismiss these people out of hand because of their background, as it is a case of what do you expect given where they were raised and what they were raised in. No, they are not beyond redemption and the love and mercy of Jesus. What we are talking here of is something different. The people who had all the opportunities in life and said, no, thank you. People who are willing to choose the path of self-destruction and reject all that is good and noble. And we know what eventually happens. You can start with the best of the best, so to speak, and in time end up with the worst of the worst. And it becomes near impossible to get back, near impossible to undo what was done. The idea of the judgment of God is not fashionable in our world today. We want to believe you can do what you want without consequences. In our society, we want to create tolerance for all sorts of deviant behavior. And you know what? It does not work. I'm not even speaking on the level of Christian truth. I'm saying you cannot live life, have a family, and hold, job, hold a job without standards. The reality is that God loves all people, and yet some people are intent on living life on their own terms. The reality is always, if we do not accept God's provision, then we court self-destruction. You see, you cannot reject God and his provision and not destroy yourself. That's just the biblical message. Jesus' heart breaks for all that turn aside. Let us never give up the hope that through prayer we can restore and see the lost restored and the wayward. Let us pray for them.